Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ayyul ahabat fillah Continuing on our study of the treaties of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yirhamuhu Hadahi da'watana wa aqeedatana This is our call and this is our creed we reach the portion of the treaties towards the end of the treaties. Wulillah alhamd, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless it to be of something that we all benefit from. As it is the Aqidah and Minhaj methodology of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Aqidah built on Kitab Allah wa Sunnatul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Rahimahumullah jami'an. Qala al Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala, Nunkir. على الذين يقسمون الدين إلى قشور واللباب ونعلم أن هذه الدعوة هادمة وننكر على من يزهد في علم السنة ويقول ليس هذا وقته وكذا من يزهد في عملي بسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نرى تقديم الأهم في الأهم والواجب على المسلمين أن يهتمون بإصلاح العقيدة. The Imam رحمة الله عليه he said in these three فقرات or عبارات the first being that from the creed of أهل السنة is that we deny or we negate or reject the dividing of the religion into terms with new terminologies and new divisions that were basically not known to the Salaf. And we know that these that this is a type of destructive dawah, a destructive propagation, meaning that some of the groups uh, some of the early sects and Ibn al-Qayyum and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also speak about this how some of the early groups uh, from the Mu'tazila and otherwise that they came up with dividing Islam into various branches things like what we now accept as the usul and the furur in the religion which even amongst the ulama in some of the different sciences, they have different, uh, those terminologies have different meanings and denotations. Sometimes usul is referring to those things which have to do with aqidah. And sometimes the furu meaning those things like ibadat, like fiqh. Uh, uh, fiqh ibadat and fiqh mu'amalat, things like this. And some others have other uh, ta'rifat or definitions for these divisions in the religion. The shahid here, Habit Fillah, is that Imam Muqbil is saying and negating what has transpired over the history of Islam with regards to these newly, these sects that have divided and come up with new terminologies to define the Islamic sciences and using those terminologies to belittle the creed of Ahl Sunnah and to belittle the correct Aqidah and the correct and certain aspects of the religion and in the explanation, they also mention that some of the Sufis, some of the early Sufi groups, that they also use these terminologies. And Sheikh, uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum also mentions this, and Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah as well, that these things began, this taqseem, uh, with regards to the religion, to usul and furu, that it began with Ibn Ali al-Ibrahim. Uh, Al Asm, and that he was a uh, from the Mu'tazila sect, and some say that he was, uh, rather he was Jahmi in his Aqidah. And again, 
Uh, Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, هذا تفريق ليس له أصل لا عن الصحابة ولا عن التابعين لهم بإحسان ولا أئمة الإسلام وإنما هو مخوض عن المعتزلة وإمثالهم من أهل بدع So this is very important. Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and this, then we need no, to go no further into this uh, this issue. He said that this tafriq, this division uh of the religion, making these categories, that they have no origin in the Sharia. They have no origin from the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, or the Tabi'een, rahimahumullah ta'ala, and may Allah, uh, and, and those who follow them in righteousness until the Day of Judgment, nor from the Imams of Islam, but rather these divisions were taken from the Mu'tazila and they had a goal by doing so. So, Ahabatifillah, this is important that also something that one of our Mashaykh, Shaykh Ibrahim Rahili, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he always mentioned this fact that to be careful of newly invented mustalahat and, and terminologies, things that have no asl or basis in the Sharia, because you will find that Ahl al-Bid'ah, they use these terminologies and they come up with these terms and attempt to uh, redefine the deen with a goal to distort the religion. And that by being cautious, you know, the Shaykh often mentioned this in many of his, his lessons, I recall, that to beware and be cautious of these things, that diamond, diamond, try to stick with the the Sharia terminologies that are coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the early Imams of this deen uh, use, these mustalahat, and be cautious and weary of newly uh, invented mustalahat with regards to the religion because they lead to people coming in with new understandings that have no basis in the Sharia and can lead a person into bid'ah and being from Ahla Ahwa. And then the Shaykh mentioned uh, Rahmatullah and he said, and we see of giving, pre we see the importance of giving precedence to the most important matters, meaning that there's a type of tartib or organization to the issues in the religion, that not all the issues are on the same level. You can't compare uh, learning the uh, for example, the science of fara'id, of inheritance, to learning how to pray, or to the issues of aqidah and creed. Not, and this is not to say that all of those matters aren't important. They all have importance, but they are not all an obligation upon all the Muslims to know and understand. But all Muslims must know certain aspects of their aqidah. They must know the proper creed about who Allah is and how to worship Him properly. And they must know how to pray. And they must know tahara. And they must know uh, if they have wealth, they must know how to pay zakat. And if they uh, have the ability to make the hajj and they want to make the hajj, then they must know the uh, obligation with regards to hajj and the, the pillars and the arkan, uh, the, um, the aspects, all the aspects of hajj. And so the knowledge in Islam and aspects of the religion, everything has uh, a different precedence. And Shaykh Mukbil Rahmatullah is saying here that we give precedence to those things which are the most important, then that which is next important, then that which is next important. And then he said, for wajib al Muslimid, he said it's an obligation upon the Muslimid, uh, on the Muslims. To give precedence to the importance of correcting their aqidah, correcting their creed with regards to Islam, how to understand Islam properly. And many, many of the ulama 
there's so many things which refer to the importance, of course, of knowing Tawheed and so forth. And first and foremost, going back to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me, letting us know that that's our purpose in life. So therefore, if that's our purpose in life, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, then we have to know how to do it. And that is the most important aspects of knowledge. It isn't social rectification. It isn't uh, trying to help the situation that the, the police aggression that uh, that goes against young black men in America, for example. That is important. Those are important social ills that as Muslims that we have to address when we live in those societies and we have to live and survive in those situations. But the most important issues is not dealing with alcohol, alcoholism and drugs in our community, but more importantly is the correct aqidah and creed and there are many people who will try to dispute this but they can't with any dalil from kitab illa wala sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instead they can only do from their desires and because they live in america or they live in the uk or they live in wherever and they are in the society so they push those issues and we have no problem with that and in fact we should be the muslims should be a source of rectification in those societies however the asal of the rectification is going to come with correct aqidah. It's teaching the people how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're going to teach people how to deal with the, the difficulties in any society, because you're not always going to be able to cure those ills. But Islam gives you the full picture and the full prescription on the most important issues, which is related to your hereafter and giving that precedence. Likewise, with trying to rectificate, uh, give rectification to the social ills in a society, that is also important, and it also has its place. But it doesn't take precedence over propagating Tawheed and knowing and understanding Tawheed and knowing and understanding how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. So those are the most important issues. And at the same time, we can be a source of rectification for those other social ills, and that all comes from Islam. Islam does not accept oppression. And those are just some of the benefits we can gain from the Shaykh, uh, from, from these aspects of this, this treaties. Uh, and there's so much evidence, and we've talked about it so many countless times in our, our studies about the importance of Aqidah and Tawheed and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, for example, we, we should know that the right of Allah Azza wa Jal is to worship Him and Him alone. And that's, those are the most important matters in this dunya. Because the Prophet Sallallahu was on a donkey with uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqallah ali ba'di wa ma haqallah ba'di ala Allah. He said, Oh Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon His servants and the right uh, of the servants uh, upon Allah? And he said, Allah wa Rasulullah alam. He said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, The right of Allah, Hakallah ali badi ya abudu wa la tushriku bi shayin. Hakallah ali badi ya abudu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa hakali badi ala Allah la yu'adhma min la yushriku bi shayin. So he said, The right of Allah upon His servants is that. They worship him and him alone and do not associate partners with him. And the right of the servant upon Allah Azza wa Jal, and of course this right is only given by Allah, and we cannot force uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to submit, but this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon himself, subhana. The right of Allah, uh, the right of the servant upon Allah is that he will not punish him if he has, he does not associate a partner with him in any way, meaning absolutely no shirk. The one who completely. The Prophet said, and la you la you should And he will not punish the one who uh, did not associate partners with him. Absolutely. You know, Tawheed. That's all So that shows us that those are the most important matters and that we should strive our utmost to adhere to Kitabillah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and rectify our communities through the correct aqidah and Tawheed. This is Islah of the Mujtama. This is Islah of the Ummah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.